Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This video is about types of functions used for movements in Unity. I am going to explain six of them which you can use in your Unity projects. I have a small scene set up here, which contains six cubes having six different scripts. Three of them use rigid body for movement. First one is rigid body 2D dot velocity. In the script, I have used a rigid body component and gave a velocity vector to it. Velocity is usually specified as a vector with components in x and y directions. And it's better to use fixed update instead of normal update function while working in physics. When hit play, you can see the cube is moving in a constant velocity. If your game needs this kind of movement and it should use collision and physics, then you can use velocity. Next is add force. In add force function we are giving a force in each frame. So the velocity of the cube will increase as time goes. Usually add force will not use an update function. Because whatever we write on update function will execute in every frame. So force will be added in every frame. And velocity increases each frame. Here you can see, when I hit play, the cube starts moving slowly and its velocity increases as it goes. You can use add force function attached to a button, so when you hit the button, a force will be added one time. And cube's velocity will decrease because of drag. Next function in the list is move position. In move position we are setting a new position to the object in each frame. Here the velocity is calculated under the hood. In the script we are taking the current position of the object and adding a new vector, and each frame the object will move to the new position. The difference between using velocity and using move position is, move position works well when the rigid body is kinematic. But velocity is good when body is dynamic. Next two functions doesn't need rigid body component. So if you want your game object move, but should not interact with physics, then you can use these. First one is transform.translate. In the script, you can see the translate function takes the vector too. When hit play, the cube will move one unit in x-axis every frame. That's because we wrote it on update method. You can trigger the movement while hitting a button by using the input.getKeyDown function. Next is transform.position. Here we are giving a vector2 value. So when hit play, the cube will move to that position immediately. In the script, I am giving a vector2 with x coordinate and no change in y coordinate. Now you can see the cube moved to that position the very next frame. So when I change the x-coordinate to something that takes the current x-coordinate and adds it to a value, then the cube is moving in a constant speed. If your game needs a motion that is the game object should snap to a point, then you can use this method. Next function is vector2.movetowards. This function takes two vector values and a speed value. First vector2 is the starting position. And the next vector2 is the end position. And the speed value is given after this. When hit play, the cube will move from the start position to the end position with a speed value that's been given in the script. If your game object need to interact with physics, then you can add a rigid body component to it. If you are using any of these functions for movements, then don't forget to use fixed update and time.delta time. Both will help you to smoothen the movements while working in physics. Time.delta time makes every movement frame rate independent. And fixed update will help to call the method, even if the loading of next frame is delayed. If you want to learn more, you can use the links in the description below. And that's the end of this video. If this video is helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe for more videos about Unity and game development. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Have a good day.